Well, you guys, quite a few people wanted to know what is new in Windows 11 23H2. This is going to be a feature update from Windows 11, probably going to be the last feature update for Windows 11, I think, because I'm pretty sure there's another operating system on the horizon. But we'll have to wait and see. That's just my theory. But we have got Windows 11 uh, 23H2 here, and we're going to be taking a look at what is new and what is coming to you in the feature update uh, very soon. So you can see here we are running 23H2 and I'll go through some of the main features. But before we do that, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 11 Pro or cheap Windows 10 Pro OEM key, check out the links in the video description and use my promo code and you'll get a 30% discount on all your purchases on CD Key Sales. So create yourself an account and use my promo code capital B capital R 9 and apply this to your order and you will get a 30% discount. Once you've submitted your order, you can pay with PayPal if you wish, and then they will send you your key, and you can then remove that annoying watermark uh, by activating your version of Windows. It's that simple. Anyway, with that said, let's move on with what's new in 23H2. So going on with the first thing that we're going to be talking about right here is we're going to open up the Explorer here, and if you look inside here, you'll see this Details area. When you hover over Actual Items here and click Details, it will give you some details about the actual item itself. They've also added this little share button here, which allows you to click on it and you can then search for people or email addresses and you'll be able to share that file with those people. So it's pretty straightforward. Nearby share, you can turn that feature on if you wish. You can share it with your normal mail client or with Outlook or whatever other uh, mail client that you're using. But they're the two that are mainly listed there. And that is the share and also the details part inside of there. Also, they've made these search boxes here, rounded these off a little bit now, so they're not square anymore. So they've just added some curves on the corners to take that nasty uh, square edge off to make it nice and round throughout Windows 11. Let's move on to the next bit underneath the home area here. They are going to add some other features in this section, which is to do with images and things like that. But we'll cover that when they finally released it. But what they are going to do is add this gallery in here. And you can see the gallery is a place to view your photos in, in File Explorer. Basically, you can set up your phone for your phone photos and add folders and things like that inside here. I do think you need a, an account with this. So you're going to have to set this up uh, for this one here. And the other one, I'm pretty sure that you can just use. So let me just click on it. Yeah, you can just add in your uh, folders area here. So whatever you want to uh, add in there. You could just basically add in your folders of photos and you'll be able to view them inside here. Next up, what we're going to take a look at is the audio. Long awaited is this new uh, audio area down here. You've now got this little uh, volume mixer here, which is something that people have been asking for for a while. So Microsoft have now implemented this into this feature update. As you can see here, it will take you to this area here and you've got the volume mixer right here. Again, there's been some issues and concerns with uh, volumes and a lot of people uh, jump to using Trumpet, but that is the latest feature update which will be coming to you soon. Next up, moving into the personalization in your settings in the background uh, image area here for your personal background, you can put this to Windows Spotlight. And what this is going to do is basically change your desktop wallpaper uh, every day and you'll get a new wallpaper just like this one as we've just done here. And it will just rotate these and change them for you. You can add in a folder as well with all your favorite wallpapers and that will also change as well. So it's nothing fancy and new. It's just using Windows Spotlight to change your backgrounds. Also in the personalization area here, we have the dynamic lighting also there. And we also have uh, the effects area down here, which is breathing rainbow wave wheel and gradient. You can also change to your own color if you wish. Uh, by just changing this down here. So let me just go ahead and click on this here, toggle this on, and you get an array of different colors on the color palette here that you can select. And this is to do with your uh, lighting and your RGB. How that's going to work, well, I really don't know. We'll have to wait and see whether that implements into a lot of devices that work with it. We'll have to wait and see what Microsoft uh, do with that one. But that is what that's for right there. Moving on to a, another item which you can take a look at inside your settings. We're going to go to accounts here, and I think you have to be signed in uh, to your Microsoft account, but it'd be called Passkey. And basically, if the websites 
uh, support pass key, you can use your pass key without typing in any passwords, and that will be coming uh, to 23H2. Next up, we're going to go into paint. Another area which has been updated is paint. You can have this in dark mode. There's also layers here, and we also have remove background uh, feature on the paint app as well, which has got some uh, useful features coming. I think there's a blur tool that they're going to be adding as well to this. I'm not 100% sure on that. I read that somewhere online, so we'll have to wait and see. But I think there's layers, and there's also remove background, which you can see uh, down here. Now, don't get your ropes up too much because it's not going to be replacing Photoshop anytime soon. It's just a paint app that they've added a couple of extra features in here, albeit it's a nice little feature. I think it's going to be on selective images that will only remove the background properly on. I'll quickly show you on an image to show you uh, the sort of issues you can have using this feature. And there's plenty of things online that will remove your background uh, a lot easier than what paint is going to do. So I've got something like this inside here, and we'll see if it can remove the black background here, which is quite an easy task for a background remover. It's done a pretty good job there, as you can see, but it does look a little bit uh, frosty around the edges and things like that. So, and it's removed that flower that the butterfly was on. So uh, again, it's not that accurate, but it works. And uh, basically that is the new feature that they're going to add into Paint. Also, as I've covered before, uh, native 7-zip and WinRAR will be uh, native on Windows 11. So you won't need to install any other software that will unzip any of those files now. Snipping Tool has also had a little update on it. You can basically do record screen with video now where you could just do a screenshot. Again, if you're looking for a quick snippet of, say, a bit of a video or you want to make a quick, uh, say, for instance, a snippet of an image, you can use a snipping tool. It is free and it will be built into Windows. It's not going to replace uh, things like OBS and things like that. But again, most people want something with audio and you unfortunately are not going to get audio uh, caption on this one, I don't think. So let's go ahead and take a look at some other things that are coming to you very soon. Probably a big one that people are looking forward to, which I'm not sure why, because there's tons of ways of doing this sort of stuff as well, but it is the actual AI implementation into Windows itself. And this one is uh, called uh, Copilot. And it's gonna be a case where you can just use this right here on Windows. You don't have to go off the, on the internet. You can use it built into Windows right here. Unfortunately, you will need to be signed in again to Microsoft. So they're trying to get you to sign into Microsoft every way, which way they can. And, and this is just one of those ways where a lot of these features are going to need you to be signed in. Otherwise, you're going to get an error coming back like this saying you need to sign in, as you can see there. So that is another new feature. If you like using this sort of stuff, then maybe signing into a Microsoft isn't a big problem for you. But there's a lot of paranoid people out there that don't want to sign into a Microsoft account. They want to use a local account and they're not going to want to use any of these features. And they're probably going to be looking for ways to disable it or turn it off. And that's basically going to be the case for a lot of things that get added into Windows 11 because some people just don't want all of the bloat, as they will call this. And again, it's just going to be part of Windows now of, rather than going on the Internet and uh, using websites and things like that. You could simply just use a copilot on your computer. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. And this is to do with uh, the taskbar behavior. So we're gonna go inside here and make some changes in there. And I'll show you, I'm just gonna open up a free Explorer windows here just to show you exactly what it does. So if we go down to the bottom here, go to taskbar settings and then go into taskbar behaviors. Uh, inside here, there will be a little feature that you can enable. Combine taskbar buttons and hide labels, and you can have this to always, or if you set it to never, basically it's going to show the labels on the actual uh, folders here on the taskbar. As you can see here, they are now listed on the taskbar, and those labels are here. You can close off each individual folder a lot easier, and that's something that some people might find useful, and you can leave that enabled if you wish. Another thing that you can do with the taskbar here, which I'll quickly enable as well. Uh, we're gonna go inside here right now. So let's go up to system here, and we're gonna go down here to where it says developer. So inside developer, you should see something called end task, and we can now toggle that switch on, and that's now enabled. And basically what that's gonna do is allow you to end the task 
on all of those items in one go. So for instance, if you had a bunch of these all opened like so, so let's just open a bunch of these here. So we've got four of these opened here and you can see them all listed here. You'll be able to open, uh, close all of these in one go, or you can just close one of them at a time. And they've just changed the name of this one here, but when you right click on it, it should say close all windows. And basically it just close all the windows like so. When you right click on the item, it will let you close all of them. And that used to be called end task, but they've renamed it for some reason. Windows backup again is another little feature they've added in here, but you've guessed it. To use it, you're going to need to be signed into a Microsoft account. So a lot of these features, they are trying to go down that Microsoft account where you're going to have to be signed in. And you can see uh, folders here, apps, uh, settings, and other things on here like credentials and things like that. So when you click on uh, the actual backup here, what it's going to do is say, let's sign into Microsoft account. So again, these features are going to be absolutely useless for you. If you're using a local account, you need to sign in to use them. And that is the Windows Backup feature that will be coming to you in the up and coming months. So personally, I just think that's just a bit silly making people sign in to use a backup feature. But hey, that's Microsoft for you. Next up, we're going to uh, System and then we're going to Storage here. Another feature that they've added in here is uh, the uh, Virtual Machine, which you can add in here. So if you look on the area here and go to Disks and Volumes, you can now see we can create a VHD or attach a VHD on here. Or you can create a dev drive or whatever it is you want to do here. You can use this feature to basically do all that, which you couldn't do before. So you can give it a name, name location, and basically set one up. Very simple and easy to do. Now, I like this feature. This is quite a nice feature. And you don't have to be signed in, obviously, to use it, which is another bonus. But again, that is basically that feature right there. If you're looking into virtual machines or virtual environments, then that one is a plus sign for you. They also added a VPN icon. When you go on a VPN, there'll be an icon showing up down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. So you'll know you're on a VPN at that particular point. Other than that, that is the new features coming to Windows 11 uh, 23H2 very soon. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope these videos have been some sort of use here. Have a lovely weekend. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members, whether you're tier one, tier two, or tier three. I appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the next video, or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now. <laughs>